Yo, what is going on YouTube? Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. And today, I've got 10 unpopular opinions that you guys are all gonna agree with because these are all the correct opinions, even if they are unpopular. First one is gonna be a little simple. Shifter Shield is underrated. I think Shifter Shield is kind of the perfect spot for a lot of these junglers to be going right now. I think it makes a lot of sense in their builds. It's, it's somewhat cheap. It makes them a little bit more tanky. So if they do get ran at by the soul inners, they can actually kind of fight back. Uh, I've been really liking it on gods like Fenrir, Naja. It used to be a bad hybrid item because all the other hybrid items were absolutely busted. But when all the other hybrid items were brought back, brought down, except like Glad Shield and Berserker, those two are still fine. But with like how bad Void is, how bad Ansile is, Runic is, it's one of the better hybrid hybrid items out there. And I think it is under bot. Some games it makes a lot of sense. Some characters it makes a lot of sense. But I think it is just 100% underrated. Number two. Hyrez needs to shift items more than just nerfing and buffing them. I think they did this with Doom Orb a couple times where they shifted it to be like an early game item and then cheap. And now it's a late game item and really expensive. They did the same thing with Ikaval and Aussie. I think they just need to try to do that more. I think they failed on Ikaval and Aussie. I think Doom Orb though is a success. And more than just items, gods also, they should just try shifting more than just nerfing and buffing. I think they just try to rely on the nerfing, nerfing and buffing of them. If you look at Emoja, maybe they can make her more two or three focused instead of her one, make her one like three Omi, make it a little bit weaker or something like that. And then buff her three to make it a little bit stronger, make it only two Omi, something like that. So she's more of a movement god instead of like a heavy CC, lock you down, somewhat damaging god. I think that'd be a cool thing to try just to see how it feels because Emoja is not feeling too great. Number three... Warriors need to be able to threaten backlines with damage late game. And this is kind of just a thought from this recent, like last month maybe. If you look at a lot of the warriors that are played right now, they're kind of in and out warriors where they look to poke you, maybe pull a relic and then they leave and then they go back in and they try to poke you down a little bit more. If you don't have relics, a warrior for the most part, if they blink onto you, should be able to kill you or get you pretty close to death. Right now, the warriors that do it are poking you down and then resetting and poking you again and then resetting. I don't think it's very healthy for the game. Gods like Kakulin, Deathwalker actually showed us a pretty cool Kakulin build where he's doing a lot of damage and he can actually threaten the backline because of how statted well tainted is. And I think that makes the backline actually feel a little threatened when the warrior goes in. The warrior actually has something to do late game. When we saw like this Bologna, she looked absolutely useless once the game got late. Alma and Tyr looked fine just because they're like that in and out warrior I was talking about. And then the Kakulin looks good because it can actually do damage. But I just think warriors need to be able to threaten. I think warriors items are a little weak right now. And I think they need a little bit of love. Number four, mana is a dead stat. It just doesn't matter. Once you get to level five, six, seven, some item, something in your in the game is going to be giving you a boatload of mana or a boatload of MP5. And you're not even going to be thinking about it. I think that needs to change. The mana buff is up 24-7 for solo laners. They can perma-spam abilities. They're getting 20% cooldown, and they never run out of mana. ADCs get MP5 in their items. Supports get MP5 in their items. Mid laners are buying book right now, so they never worry about uh, mana. Sometimes junglers, depending on their build, if they go like I into Jotuns, they kind of worry about mana. And then you have the totem to also give you mana. And it just makes mana feel like it's not a really... A, a stat that matters in the in even the mid game it doesn't matter and i think it's a bit lame that that is a thing i think you could just keep the totem to maybe give you just like a burst mana heal like 100 mana or something like that and then it it gives you just movement speed if you try to reset it the current amount of mana in the game makes it so you could just spam abilities so you don't really have to think about how you're using your items and i think that just makes the game less or it makes it more simple number five i have no idea how you guys are going to feel about this one but relics for the most part have too low of a cooldown this is nearly every relic in the game. Once you get it upgraded, it's up every two minutes. I think it would be more fun if Smite, you actually had to think about using your relics and maybe even some fights, you hold your relics because you're going to die so you think you can just be up for the next fight. I think that just makes the depth of Smite a lot higher. With the relics being as low as they are, you can kind of just use them whenever you want, even if it's like, um, maybe I didn't need to use it instead of, Dang, even though I got a little bit of value out of it, it would have been way better if I just didn't use it. At like 120 seconds, 100 seconds, a lot of these relics are. And then Relic Dagger brings them down to 60. I think it's just a, little, a, a, a bit tough because it makes relics just feel like they are something you can kind of spam a little bit instead of just play with them correctly. Number six, tier two items, tier two bridge items, I should say, are a big part of Smite and they are missing. Currently, there's only one tier two bridge item in the game. And it is Stone of Binding. It's a pretty meh item, but 
Bridge items as a whole are just missing, and I, I think it, it was really good for Smite when bridge items were in the game. Speaking of Ikaval and Aussie, talking about like shifting, I like that they tried to shift them, but they shifted them into a spot where they're just useless. Ikaval is now way too expensive for something that's decent early game. Aussie is absolutely just terrible unless you're below 35% health. Glad Shield, Berserker Shield, those are actually really good works. I think they were really good reworks or reshifts, whatever you want to call them. But I think there should just be more 1700, 1600, 1500, 1800, something like that, gold items in the game. Because it just allows you to build those items to give you spikes early game. And I, I think it would be interesting to see what you can build and do with those items. Number seven, this is probably going to be hated. Crit is good for the game. 100% crit is good for the game. It might feel not good sometimes because you're not getting lucky or you're getting too lucky sometimes and it feels really good. But crit is just super good for smite. ADCs need to be building some sort of extra damage. The idea where you build some crit and then it just makes your items do extra or your crits or your your autos do extra damage. I think that's okay in practice, but it just makes it so you can build just a little bit of crit and then build in just like a kin size. So you're building and you're getting like 120% extra damage, 130% extra damage and shin size. And then crit is literally built in every game instead of just some games. So I just don't like that idea. It also makes objectives die a lot quicker, which is good. Objectives need to be dying. So I like crit for the game. They might be a little strong right now, but that's okay. I'd rather have crit be good than crit just be absolutely terrible like it was in like season seven when ADCs were just dying to thorns. Number eight, mages and hunters have no good first item that aren't stacked item or items that you stack. The one thing that I'll push out of the way as like a maybe is divine and mid. Divine and mid feels pretty decent. It's super cheap, 2200 gold. It gives you good pot or good power, good protection shred or good pen, flat pen. So it's not that bad. I think it's like the one that's maybe possible. But Book of Thoth, Warlocks, Devs, and Trans just give you way, way, way too much power compared to every other item you can build. Or it's just stupid to not build them and to just kind of not throw away your early game, but put your early game into stacking instead of being able to fight. And I think that's lame. I think th there needs to be other items that you can build that spike a little bit faster that you don't have to worry about stacking that you can go first item. Ikaval could be that option, but it's way too expensive. Desert could be that option, but it's not much, it's not, it's not enough power as an option. Aussie, but Aussie gives no power. There's just no item that really gives power outside of those stacking items. So I think giving them a new item that they could just build instead of just stacking would be really cool for them. Number nine, Smite's balancing has been phenomenal lately. I've really liked where the game has been going. Yes, it might be getting a little stale right now. Yes, your games are probably getting ruined by some guy named Forkman45. But it happens. That's that's just the nature of competitive games. Somebody's probably tilted. Somebody doesn't care if they win. They'd rather lose. They think it's more fun to take a speed buff than to actually try. That happens. But for the most part, I actually think they've balanced the game really well. This current map feels like it's in a great spot. A couple things, obviously, I disagree with that I've talked about before. Uh, stuff like the anti-heal, the invade, or the anti-heal uh, brawling combat, whatever you want to call it, and then the invade. Stuff isn't great. But other than that, Smite feels really, really fun right now. And my last one, which is probably going to be a really, really tough pill to swallow, but in my opinion, Duel could be a 10 out of 10 game mode, but the focus on it is too much like 1v1 Conquest. It feels like the game wants you to farm instead of just prove you're better at 1v1ing and prove you're better just, better just mechanical. It kind of comes down to just who knows how to farm, where to farm, when stuff sp spawns, more than it's just who is better at the game or in their, in their matchup. I, I think it'd be really cool if they made the map a little bit longer, a little jungle on both sides, one with like the, the Bull Demon King, because the Bull Demon King is 10 out of 10, and then one with like a red buff that you can fight over, and then that's just about it. No mana, because mana's a resource. You shouldn't just get a free mana MP5 uh, blue buff and cooldown if you just don't have any MP5 in your build. And then to make the lane a little bit longer, so you can actually zone the enemy from the, the wave if they're so far behind. So then if you're, if you're ahead or if you're playing an early game god, you can kind of bully them out a little bit. Because if it gets to a point where people are just backdooring because they're so strong, because that's what used to kind of be the meta, just perma farming and then hitting level 20 and then just winning, I think that was lame. I'd rather have it just be a skillful 1v1. Don't pick something late game and then unless you know you can kind of survive it and play it well. Otherwise, yeah, that's that's how I feel about it. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you guys again next time. Peace.